Game improvement irons. These are irons that help golfers that don't hit the middle of the club face every time. But which iron is the most forgiving? You are going to find out today. Hey golfers, I'm Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. We have a different test today. Today I'm actually going to hit all the game improvement irons available in 2021. But instead of focusing on the shots that are hit well, we're actually going to focus on the golf shots that I don't hit well. Oh boy, there's the miss hit. So I'm going to hit more golf shots for this test. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the good shots and we're going to talk about the outliers. Because let's face it, I particularly don't fit into an iron that is a game through an iron. But as a human being, I'm not always going to catch it in the middle of club face every single time. <laughs> well, now we've got the outlier in there. So we're going to focus on the outliers. The outliers are important because we want to make sure we get away with those shots where we don't quite catch the middle of the club face. For today's test, I'm going to be testing seven different manufacturers. First up will be the Mizuno JPX 921 hot metal. We'll also test the Ping G425. Also the Wilson D9, the Cobra Rad Speed, the TaylorMade Sim 2 Max, the Callaway Maverick, and the Titleist T300. So if you're looking to upgrade into new equipment, this test is going to help to explain which iron is the most forgiving in 2021. Make sure to bring in your current irons when you do a fitting. We do accept trades at Second Swing in our stores and online at secondswings.com. So make sure to bring those in. It's a great way to help offset the prices on your new game improvement irons. Let's hit a whole bunch of shots. So I mentioned that I'm going to be taking out the uh, good shots today and focusing on the outliers today. So there's really three ways to focus on that. First thing is ball speed. So the shots that have the highest ball speed typically are going to be the shots that are going to be hit the best. The shots that have the lowest ball speed are the ones that I don't hit quite as well. So I'll be, f be focusing on the shots with lower ball speed. Also I'll be t paying attention to hit location. So you can notice here on the screen that all the eight shots here are all pretty close to the middle, but we can see if we click on each shot here, you can see some that were maybe a little bit off center. For example, this one was slightly more on the toe side. So it's another way that we can get rid of the, the shots that we miss hit. And then finally, dispersion. So we can notice there's some shots that I hit here to the left, and there's some shots that I hit here to the right side. Knowing my golf game, I like to play a gentle little drawer. So those shots that go on a little further up the screen are the ones we're probably going to be taking off, focusing on the miss hits. So let's first start off here with the Mizuno JPX 921 Ford. So let's take out the first two that have the fastest ball speed. So that would be shot eight, and that would be shot four. So those two are definitely our best. I'm going to keep up the five shots that I didn't quite hit as well. So if we look here, we can see if there's anything else that stands out to us here. Um, so I'll be focusing on either shot seven or shot eight here. Um, shot seven would probably be a little bit more of the shot that I probably hit better because it generally drew a little bit more for me there as well. Um, so we would take that out. So now that I do that, if we take a look at my hit location here, uh, we can see that uh, it's still pretty close to the middle but you will notice that my ball speed numbers are a little bit lower. So we're going to focus on the five shots that I hit the worst. So let's move over on to the next club and then we'll take a look at all the numbers after I hit each club. <laughs> well now we've got the outlier in there. All right, so keeping up the uh, outliers, the five outliers with the Ping G425. Shot 16 had the highest efficiency and highest ball speed there, so that one was hit really well. Uh, if we take a look here at other numbers, we can see here 
Sharp 14 there, a little bit higher there as well with uh, efficiency in numbers. And then we have, let's see here, 130. So it's probably the last, last three shots here, the ones that I did actually hit the best with the ping um, G425. So now we have five of the shots that I didn't quite hit as well. And see here, pretty close to the middle. If anything, maybe slightly towards the heel side compared to when I was hitting the Mizuno iron there. But always, they're going to be pretty close overall. But there's going to be times where I don't hit the ball as well. So you'll notice the ball speed was higher on those three shots. So naturally, I took away those three shots. And the efficiency was also higher on those three shots there as well. So now we actually have five versus five for the first two. You can kind of notice the difference here. The Mizuno JPX 921 hot metal was actually going just a little bit further. Club speed numbers were the exact same, but JPX 921 hot metal was just a little bit higher on the ball speed number, but a little bit less spin than the Ping G425. Let's hit some more models. Oh boy, there's the miss hit. Really interesting there. Well, we know we do have one outlier up here with the D9 that I'll be keeping in numbers wise. Uh, so notice the ball speed on this shot was quite a lot lower. I hit it higher on the face and you'll notice the total height was actually kind of low. So this was clearly a miss hit. But check out the fact that that carry distance was still over 200 yards. That was quite impressive because that was clearly felt like a miss hit, but notice the spin rate went down, cut it high on the face, but it still did actually go kind of pretty far, which is really interesting. So let's take out the good shots. So shot 17, that one there was the first shot that I hit. Very, very well struck, a little higher ball speed. Take that one out. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that stands out here. We've got 132.2. And then let's see if there's anything else that we've got here. Smash factor there. So yeah, we can see probably would be, we've got competition here between this shot and this shot here. Let's say the outlier was, the better one was probably that one there. So we'll take that one out there too. Now we have five miss hits with the D9 to talk about. That one will be taken out. <laughs> that was hit so well. There's the miss hit. Outlier time. So let's take out the uh, best three. So we notice this shot here was the first shot that I hit. Notice very, very high ball speed. We had one here with the efficiency number very, very high. So that one there would be the one we would take out. And then we've got three here to kind of choose from to figure out which would also be the outlier. Would it be this one, possibly that one, uh, and this one, or this one? Let's choose the one with the actual highest ball speed number. We'll take that one away. So now we have the five, uh, the five miss hits per se, or the five outliers um, to talk about with the red speed. Okay, let's take out the three best shots. So that would be this one with the highest ball speed. Um, we look what else we have here. We notice there's a couple that are nice and straight here. Uh, that one's got a little bit less ball speed, so we'll leave that up there for now. This one here's got more ball speed, so we'll take that one out. Let's see if anything else stands out to us here. Um, let's see here. Probably this one here. Notice the efficiency was very, very high on that shot. And then you'll notice um, high ball speed. That would probably be 
kind of the, the outlier there too. So those would be the five remaining shots for the Maverick. We have two more clubs to go. We still got the Titleist T300 and the TaylorMade Sim 2 Max. Definitely feel like he hit the Titleist T300 pretty well. If you notice the efficiency number over here on the right, there are only two shots that were actually under 149. And the reason why efficiency, the smash factor number is so high is because the lofts are a little bit stronger, because my attack angle is pretty shallow, and due to my dynamic loft of compressing the ball really, really well. Generally speaking, 135, 136 with a tour professional with a seven iron will notice very, very high. That's because tour professionals use clubs that have about seven or eight degrees more loft on them. Um, so let's take a look here. We can see a lot of shots here, a lot of good shots. So it's going to be hard to dissect to see which one to take out. Um, so let's go for the highest ball speed first. That one, 133. 133 there as well. Um, and then probably. 132.9 on that shot there too. So the Titleist T300 was, it was pretty good. I hit a lot of good shots with it. And finally, we have the Sim 2 Max. That's a little left. Okay, that was uh, 56 golf swings. Not a single shot taken out, just uh, taking out the, the best three with each one. So let's do that with the Sim 2 Max to finish up here. So let's add up, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so let's add up efficiency here. Let's see if there's anything that stands out here. A little bit lower on the efficiency here of the Sim 2 Max, let's see what we've got. Um, so the top two, 132.1, that one probably would be an outlier. I mean a good shot, not really an outlier. Um, 131.8 there. And then the other best shot would probably be this one right here. Okay, perfect. So now we have five outlier shots, so the five worst shots that I hit out of the eight with each club to talk about. So this is really going to showcase the level of forgiveness. So let's break all the numbers down. So when I was hitting all these shots here, my club speed was very close to 88 miles an hour every single time. So very, very fair test across the board. So let's focus on these other numbers. I'm going to drag Smash Factor over here to the left. Now, the reason why I don't have Smash Factor out there all the time is I think there's too much focus on Smash Factor in, in iron fittings especially. Focus more on the, on the ball speed. So ball speed is always going to be very, very inconsistent. Um, so Smash Factor, that's ball speed divided by club speed. That, so that'll show differences in the efficiency there. But as I mentioned, keep in mind, with these clubs being game improvement irons, that number is always going to be higher uh, because the loft is stronger on these game improvement irons. So first up, let's talk about ball speed. So if we look here, see which club gave us the highest ball speed when uh, we took out the best three. So first up, we can see the Titleist T300, 131.3. So that's very, very impressive there. So for the Titleist T300, uh, one thing that also stands out to me there too is the efficiency number. So the small plus or minus number under there was also the lowest. So not only was it the highest ball speed, but it also was consistently the highest ball speed. So kudos for the Titleist T300 iron performing well with regards to ball speed. So this efficiency number, that will also follow suit there. Um, so you'll notice, uh, we can see here between 148 and I think 146 is kind of the range. Um, the ball speed number range was 131.3 to 127.9. The ping G425 
It was a little bit lower on the, on the, on the ball speed there and also the efficiency. Um, but there's also positives to the, the ping as well. It's not always about distance. For a player that needs to launch the ball a little bit higher and generate a little bit more spin, what you'll notice here is the ping G425 was actually up near towards the top. So actually it was the highest, so the highest with regards to launch angle. So if you need a player that needs to launch the ball a little higher with their irons, the ping G425 would be the one. It's not going to go the furthest. It's not always about distance with the irons. Actually, it's more about achieving what you need to achieve. Um, we'll see also a spin rate. You notice that also it was the highest spin. So the ping G425, even though the ball speed was a little bit lower, which isn't everything because it's not always about distance, we'll notice a little extra height is not going to hurt anyone there with regards to launch and spin. Especially considering these irons are game improvement irons, we'll notice the spin rate is kind of on the lower side because generally speaking, my 7 iron which I play which has got 34 degrees of loft on it spinners, spins in the mid 5000 RPM range. Um, these clubs we're testing today have about 27 to 30 degrees of loft. Keep in mind also the Ping G425 has 30 degrees of loft on it so it's one of the highest with regards to loft um, so that's why there was less ball speed. So interesting numbers there to kind of focus on. If we look at the other end of the spectrum of launch angle, the Sim 2 Max actually launched the lowest. Um, if we look at spin rate, we'll notice the spin rate, the Wilson D9 actually generated the lowest amount of spin out of all the irons. Um, the Cobra Rad speed wasn't far off there with regards to a lower spin rate as well. And guess what? Those are the two strongest irons that we tested. So they're the two strong and lofted irons. Naturally, you're going to get lower spin and probably a little bit more ball speed. So more ball speed, lower spin, and it's going to probably carry a little bit further. Well, let's look at carry distance. So if we look at carry distance, we'll notice the Cobra Rad speed carried to 205 yards going 220. So it was going pretty far. D9, 204.4, going 220. So those are your two furthest game improvement irons that you're going to see in this test. If we look at the other end of the spectrum, I mentioned the Ping G425 because it has the more loft on it. A little bit shorter, actually quite significantly shorter than the others. The Titleist T300 was also a little bit shorter but you'll notice how um, high the, the ball speed was. So that actually it spun a little bit more. So Titus T300 is great because it flew a little higher, spun a little bit more, but also generated some ball speed there as well. Speaking of height, so height and landing angle is very important in an iron fitting. Um, so you'll notice here, you can see with the Wilson D9 and the Cobra Rad speed, just hovering just a little under that 45 degree landing angle number that I like to kind of talk about. Um, if you're a player that has a lot of speed, probably going to be okay with regards to the landing angle. But if you're a golfer that doesn't have a lot of speed, uh, you maybe don't hit the ball high enough as it is, landing angle might become a problem with the strong lofted irons. So it's important to pay attention to that. Generally speaking, we want the highest landing angle we can, especially for those players that have slower swing speed. Tour average is about 100 to 110 feet in the air with their irons. So you'll notice. Uh, we've got kind of a range here from about 100 to about 120 feet in the air. That is important. So it's important that the height was higher because the spin rate is significantly less than what you would see on tour, normally around about that 6,000 to 7,000 RPM range with a 7 iron because, once again, they have lofts 34, 35 degrees on their 7 iron. Let's also focus on dispersion. I took out the three best shots with each club. So this is really showcasing the forgiveness. So it's kind of interesting. I'm always looking for circles that are a little bit smaller. The Cobra Rad Speed, this light blue circle, a little bit smaller there, we can kind of notice. Uh, if we look at the Mizuno JPX 921 Hot Metal, notice maybe a little more tendency of out to the right side. Now that is also related to the lie angle a little bit. Mizuno irons are a little bit flatter than others. We noticed the ping was a little bit shorter with regards to carry distance. And we have a lot of good circles here. We've got the Titus T300 in the middle, this green circle. Um, we can see the D9 kind of going the furthest overall, but we noticed the dispersion pattern was a little bit larger there as well. Keep in mind, I haven't forgot about the good shots. So, didn't think I wasn't going to focus on the good shots that I hit today. So, let's take a look at every single shot now. So, I'm going to select 
all the shots that I hit. And now we're going to have eight shots up to finish with. So every single shot that was hit today. And then we can take a look and see what the difference is here if we now compare all of the eight shots. OK, so if we look at the left screen here, we'll notice the circles got a little bit larger. So this is 56 dots on the screen. So let's see if there's anything that we can kind of dissect. Uh, one thing that kind of stands out to me here is the Titleist T300. That green circle kind of smack kind of right in the middle. We've got a lot of green dots here that are very, very close to the middle, which is really kind of important to pay attention to. Now that we've got every single shot up here, you'll notice the Cobra Rad Speed and D9. Going a little further, but notice what happens to those dispersion circles. It gets a little bit larger. So I mentioned it's not always about distance. We take a look at the numbers to finish off here. Let's see which club gave us the highest ball speed for every single shot. So if we see here, the Titleist T300 still is the highest ball speed out of all the shots, so keeping every single, all eight shots up. Um, so that stands out there. Callaway Maverick and Cobra Rad Speed were also up there. Um, if we look at spin rate, we can dissect and see which one spins the most. We got the Ping G425 and the Titleist T300, your higher spinning game improvement irons. If we look at carry distance, we'll notice Cobra Rad Speed D9 for sure. We're going the furthest overall. If we look at height, we notice T300 and Ping G425 flew the highest in the air. And you'll notice what happens now that I took, you know, I kept up all the good shots. Notice how that landing angle now is actually good for all the shots there too. So once we take out all the outliers, it gets a little bit closer together with all the numbers. So this is a really interesting test, testing seven of the current game improvement irons available. We were testing forgiveness today. So forgiveness is very important in your irons. So make sure to come on into Second Swing to come get fit. Also, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.